Hi, today we're going to build a CSV file to database table module using AGGrid. So let's check this out. I'm going to upload a CSV file right now with about 8,000 something items and I'm going to open it in here. And as you can see, I have the complete CSV file now populated in less than a second in my AG grid table. And I can go to all the different pages and even edit the items. And they will be also edited into the CSV file immediately that is in the AG grid. And actually, let's do this at the beginning. So we have a simplified version of working with it. Let's turn Nelson into, uh, let's add Joe on the beginning. And uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to disclose his age. So let's just put this like this. Uh, and let's put this like this here. And let's export this and let's see if that worked. So let's open the file this one. And as you can see, we have Joe with an undisclosed age and an undisclosed year in the CSV file that was originally updated without that information uh, using our AG grid uh, that was originally populated from the CSV file uh, with 8000 items in less than a second. So this is really a powerful video here and really a powerful tutorial, a powerful clonable because there are so many applications from CRMs to uh, building the next Airtable. You know, if, if you're familiar with it, compete against Airtable and build it in WISP. You can do that. Uh, you don't need to use Airtable with WISP. You can build your own Airtable in WISP. So that is the power of WIST. So let's go to the Webflow build right now and let's just walk through the HTML structure of this. So this is the component from the previous video I made. If you don't know how that works, I highly recommend you to check the video out right here in the video description. Um, I explain one step by step how to build this component, how to turn this file into the CSV raw data. And now in this video, we're going to turn the raw data into the table. So let, but let's just still walk through the basic setup. So we have a button in here, but originally we have a file input. So we have this file input here. This is where we will upload the file. And we have the tag using the custom element in Webflow of input, the type of file, the waste attribute of CSV input, and the ID of file upload, as well as hidden true. And we only accept .csv files. And now we're going to hide this again. And as you can see, how do we upload the file if it's hidden? Very simple. We have a label applied to it. And this label is styled like a button that looks way nicer than the generic CSV upload like this here. Um, or the generic file upload. And we have the attribute with the for attribute to the ID of the file input, the file upload. So we can have the file upload hidden and we add the functionality that is on the file upload using the for attribute on this label style like a button, which is customizable and styleable um, compared to the CSV file upload, which is not. So this is a nice way how we can transfer the functionality from one HTML component to another one um, and adjust a customized design to it. And now we have the AG grid in here. This is the same one as the AG grid video we have. Um, if you didn't saw that video yet, I would highly recommend to check it out in the video description. It's right in here. And now we have the button just to export the CSV file from the AG grid, um, just using a custom element and using a real button tag. So we add a button and we add the waste attribute of export CSV onto it. And now we need to do some custom code here. So in here, we're going to load the AG grid uh, library and again, I highly recommend you to watch the whole AG grid tutorial I made. I will be explaining all the little pieces and details for how this works in detail in there. But there is one thing that is different and this is the body code in here. 
um, because we cannot, we're not loading the data from the beginning. We only want to populate the AG grid with the data from the CSV. So we have to wait until the CSV was read. And we cannot set the columns um, at, at, at an initial state. We have to wait until we get this data from the CSV and then set them later on. So what we're going to do is, um, with this code, we're going to start to set the generic structure of the AG grid, like editable, sortable, filter, and all that features, how many pages you want to have on each view in the pagination. And then we're going to set whatever data is in the AG grid right now um, using the web, the WIST push to, to communicate with WIST API. We're going to commute, we're going to let our WIST variable of, um, actually, we don't have an updated row functionality in here. I just added that in here in case you want to update rows and send it back to the database. This would already be programmed to do that, but we can ignore that for now. We have the, um, oh yeah, basically, this is not needed at all. Um, this is what I just wanted to explain to you how that works. The only thing this is doing is it is getting the updated data. So let's think of it like this. How did we call this in here? We call this updated row. So in case I were to add now a variable called updated row, and we're going to do it a computed variable, and we set this of an initial state of an empty object, like this. And if I right now were to upload my CSV file, and let's take this one, and the moment I would right now update a row, for example, Joe Croc123, I would have the updated row in here. And if I now were to add a noi, uh, it would up it would have the latest updated row in, row in here. So in case you want to send that back to the database, it is already a preset in the code to offer this functionality, but this is not necessary in here. And now we're just going to load the AG grid and we're going to set the live data to an empty array because we're going to populate this within waste. And now we're just going to, um, what are we doing here? Um, function to update live data based on cell edits. Okay, so we're going to update the live data as I update the records and all of that. So the row ID and all of that. And yeah, this is just basically the generic AG grid setup. It is pretty much the same um, as just their A API documentation or as the AG grid video I did. And this is basically it. And we can just close this here and the magic now is happening on WIST. So let's reload this and let's go to the setup in WIST. So first of all, we set the CSV loader visibility because as you can see right now, it is true. And we base this on the V dot rows. So the moment I upload a CSV file right here, the visibility of this hold of this upload input will disappear because right now uh, we have something in the rows and there is something going on with WIST's editor right here. I don't know what, there are some bugs in here that it's somehow giving me this random UI. This is not normal, so it should look better on your end. Uh, I don't know what's going on here, but it's working. Uh, and now this is set on the visibility of the rows. Actually, let's just upload a better file. Let's let's upload a smaller file because we loaded like almost 10,000 things in here. That may be it, that it may have some issues in the preview. So yeah, as you can see, we have them in here. It probably was the count. And right now, the length of this isn't zero. So there is something in here. So since we now uploaded something successfully, we're going to remove the visibility of the holder because we don't want the holder to be here when we have the data uploaded. That would interfere with the way we're going to work with the data table. And now we have the functions is exactly the same from the previous video um, to turn basically the um, CSV that was uploaded. The moment we have a file that is available to us right here, 
we're going to run the function to take this file and to turn it into an array. And then, right here, we're going to um, run a condition that the moment we have something in the rows, so we have content, we have an array in the rows, we're going to run the function to um, basically take only the value. So if we have make model price, right? In here, we only need to take make model price to set the columns for the AG grid. Right here, make model price. We need to set them. And we need to set them in a format that AG grid can handle. So the way AG grid handles it is we need to put them in objects and we need to always do field make, field model. So what we're going to do here is we're going to search for the rows in here um, and we're going to search for the keys and we're going to ap apply field key. So we, we search in this array, we have the keys make, model, price, and then we have another make, model, price. We only need to have the sum of the keys and we're going to only get this from the first iteration. So we get make, model, price. And now we do this operation here to wrap them into this object saying field make, field model, field price, so that AG grid can handle that. And now we're going to set all the data in the AG grid the moment we have the columns processed. We don't want to base this on the rows because if we base it on the rows, we may try to initialize AG grid before we have the columns set. So we want to wait until the columns function ran and then once we have a length in the columns, which is true right now, this is the con custom condition here, we're going to add the data into the AG grid. So we're going to set const column defs equals v dot columns. This is the, func the, the variable we have in here, which we just set one step ago. And now we're going to do grid api dot set column devs and then we put the column devs in here you could just add this right in here but this is just how ag grids documentation recommends us to do that and then we're just going to do a console lock because uh, who doesn't like console locks and then we're just going to load after we added the columns we're going to load the rows the whole array in here for example if i were not to add the array in here and I would only add the columns, right? And I would try to upload a CSV file. Let's take the small one. I would only see the columns, but there is no data in here. So we have to now also upload the whole array itself, which we got extracted from the CSV file that we wanted to upload using the custom function to get the data in here. And actually, let's add the FinSuite CSV in here, and we can see we have that in here as well with all the data populated. And now the last step is to download this whole thing. So we have this button here with the attribute of export CSV applied to it. So right now we're going to do an on event action on click and we're going to run the function and we're going to call AG Grid's API. So their internal functionality for their script, for their SDK. And this is just grid API dot export data as CSV, their function. And we're going to run their function. And as you can see, we just downloaded a file and another one and another one. And this file will be automatically, since we're using AG Grid's API, based on all the edits that happen in here. So we see we have this random number after studio form. If I now were to download this, I would have this downloaded as a CSV file with, actually, did I download the wrong thing? Let's try this again. Uh, let's try saving this and let's do this again. I think I made a mistake here or clicked the wrong thing. Okay, let's take this one. Okay, yeah, as you can see, we have now the random number after studio form. So that is working and it's going to give you live updates and the download from the manipulations or the edits you did within 
the AG grid. And this is how you're going to create a CSV to AG grid um, application or a, a feature for your application that is super handy if you're going to work with a lot of data. For example, if you want to import leads or whatever in your application, you can have the user upload the CSV, preview the whole data in the database that gets dynamically rendered and adjusted based on the columns and the data. You can have the user do edits to it, sort it, change it, update records, and then click a button, for example, and instead of having it downloaded, take this data and send it to your backend and or loop through it and only update the records that are needed on your backend. So there are a lot of enterprise and advanced applications for this. And I'm going uh, to be excited to see what you're going to build with it. And I hope that this helps you. And thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for all your support, all your wonderful encouragement and comments. I really, really, really appreciate that. And yeah, thank you so much. Happy developing and yeah, see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.